So, um, what are we doing today? We are, so we've been doing, over the last, like, ten streams, I've been doing a Saints and Seducers plugin for Lucian. And we've done all the implementation, and we've done the vast majority of the voice acting. We have got some left to do for all the idle lines. We've got the voice acting to do. So today is a voice acting session. I'm going to blitz recording those last lines, get it done. Depending on what time we've got left, I might do the packaging up and the cleaning and the testing. Hopefully to be able to get it ready to release this weekend, but you never know how long these things are going to take. It might be that I need like 40 takes on one particular fiddly line. We'll just have to see how it goes. But yeah, today is a big recording session, so you'll get to see me doing lots of my silly Lucian marvellous stuff with my fingers like that, because that's how I always am when I'm doing Lucian, because of the tension in his upper body and in his throat. You know, all the tension comes out and my fingers are like that. Uh, so that's, that's, that's what we're doing. Okay, anyway, I'm just opening the creation kit. Uh, for those of you who like modding, I did a post in the Discord the other day to say that a new version of uh, Newchem's creation kit fixes, SSE creation kit fixes, is now available. And it is so useful. Let me show you why. Um, let me just minimize my stream. Uh, hang on, uh, let me just... Bleh, words, English, brain, how do... Um, let me just reduce my screen resolution down to 1080p so that you guys stand a chance at seeing what I'm doing. And then I will show you the most amazing new feature to be added to the creation kit in the history of time. This has changed my life as a modder. It's going to save me hours and hours, and that is no exaggeration. Um, so let me just show you. Right, look at this. So here's the creation kit. So far, so good. You can see my screen, can't you? Yeah, you go. Yeah, so so far, so normal. We press open. Look at this! There's a search box now! So I don't have to go scrolling down trying to find where Lucian is, and I've learned that he's sort of around there by now. I can just go Lucian, and look! It just comes up to the top! Honestly, that is the most amazing thing. Anyway, we want the Saints and Seducers plugin, which is that one there. So I'm going to press OK and load that up. And this is now going to be version 1.6.2 to maintain version parity with our existing main file version. But anyway, there we go. Load that up. Isn't that cool? I mean, it's such a basic feature, but it's something I've wanted for so long. So Newchem is just the deity for sorting that out. So, so praise be Newchem. If, if you ever happen to hear this, Newchem, you are a legend. I did comment to tell them that, but um, I don't know whether they read their comments or not. Uh, but it's so, so useful. Uh, you can only get it on SE. It'll only work for the 64-bit creation kit. Uh, but that is the much better creation kit anyway. It's much more stable and much less crashy. So, um, yeah, thoroughly recommend. Okay, let me just summon Tiny Lucian, and we will be good to get started. Oh, and I need to open up my laptop so I can read the chat while you guys, while I'm working, and you can read what you're saying. And, yeah, because it's nice having you keeping me company, you know? It's much more fun working on this sort of thing when I've got you guys chatting away. Otherwise, modding can be a very solitary affair, much like writing and most creative things, really. And I know someday that it'll all work out. You'll make me work so we can work to work it out. And I promise you, kid, that I'll give so much more than I get. Oh, I just haven't met you yet. Do 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 Joseph being Joseph and Grey, by which I hope you mean Joseph being Joseph and additionally Grey, and not Joseph being both Joseph and Grey, because if I were Grey as well, that would be very confusing. Um, that would be a, 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 just a very difficult thing to figure out. So I'm glad that that's not the case. That makes my life much simpler. Right. Okay. So, Lucian, Saints and Seducers patch. And the great thing about having released the latest Lucian update is I no longer need to worry so much about accidentally showing you guys the new Inigo interactions, which is what I've always taken so much care to hide, because look, if we filter by Lucian, 
Of what I've always been trying to make sure I don't show you on stream is down here we have JR Lucy and Inigo and it has users showing you how many times this is used and it's 455. <laughs> Whereas before it was always about 10. So those of you who knew what that meant would realize this quest is now referenced 450 times, 455 times when it never was before. Which would have really given away the fact that we've massively expanded it. So I've always been careful to hide that whenever I've been streaming. Um, but uh, but yeah, that's that's what I've always been careful to hide. Doesn't matter now, because you guys know it's in there. Uh, anyway, a little insight into my life. Hope you're still enjoying the interactions. Thank you, Diabetic Monster. I'm really glad. It's really great to hear that you guys are enjoying it. I really wanted it to be fun and exciting and cool for you guys. Probably none of you will have heard all the interactions yet. I'd be very surprised if any of you discovered them all, because it takes a long time to get through them all. is so useful helps me survive um but i'm glad you like their interactions that you think they're cute um as ever bear in mind um what am i bearing in mind oh yeah uh the whole tweaking of probabilities and the balance of how often these things should repeat is a very fine art rather than a science and requires constant tuning so if you ever think a line is repeating too often like one particular conversation is coming up more than the others. And they are supposed to repeat and they have different variants to make them repeat. But if you're being particularly annoyed by a line or a conversation happening too often, let me know and I'll turn the probability on it down if enough of you tell me. You know, if it's something that's consistent. If some of you say it doesn't play enough and some of you say it plays too often, then that's probably just the RNG causing you to happen to get it more often. But if we can determine that there is a line that's consistently happening too often for lots of you, then I will turn that probability down. So do give me that feedback. Um, to be fair, Yami, Gary is a very cool, supportive guy. Just generally. He has been an amazing source of support for me throughout the development of Lucian. Um, so, lovely chap. Um really so uh so that would wouldn't be out of character for him but no he did have an extra interest in the stream when i was launching it because he was in on it um will there be an option to turn lucian into a vampire in the future no no i get why you guys ask this but you do know that changing lucian's character to turn him into an evil vampire would be a massive shift for him you know he's he wouldn't be the marvelous hello kind of thing if he were a blood-sucking vampire do you, you must appreciate how much rewriting of all of the dialogue that would take to make that something that made any sense at all i'm not annoyed it's just it gets asked a lot and it would be so far out of his character so far that it just would no i'm not mad enough to do that kind of torture to myself to give myself that much work to do for something that wouldn't even be nice. You know, who would really... I know you guys are interested to see what he would be like as a vampire. But do you really want to put him through that kind of torment? You must know how unhappy that would make him. I mean... So no, I'm not turning him into a vampire. <laughs> no. I'm not. Or a werewolf. Or a lich. You've had Inigo and Lucian and Inigo and Ori conversations fire at once a couple of times. That's interesting. And shouldn't happen. They're conditioned to not do that. So that's interesting. I'll have to try and look into seeing why that would happen. Because they're conditioned to check if the other user is currently in a scene. I guess the only way that it could occur is if it's the starting line because it, the scenes are triggered by one starting line so if this which is an idle line so if the starting line played for ori starting a conversation at the same time as the starting line played for lucian starting a conversation with inigo then it's possible that the two could play at the same time and there's no way i can prevent that so maybe that's it but i would have thought the chances of that happening are very slim the timing lineup would have to be pretty ridiculous I would have thought. It certainly never happened for me in testing, but if you say you've happened a couple of, had that happen a couple of times, then maybe I'll have to look into seeing if there's a solution for that. I don't know what it would be, though.
Puppy Lucy, and I love that. Hey, Yellow Ego Cat. Good to see you. I'm very glad you're enjoying the update. You are very welcome. I hope you continue to enjoy it. Yeah, that'd be great, Morgan. Do let me know, because I'm fascinated to know what's going on there. Hey, Vickle, welcome to the stream. Always lovely to see you. Well, not see you, but you know, see your name. Right, so CC Saints and Seducers interaction patch, what we're working on so far. Gone through all of these. We're now down to the idols. Now what I would, so I'm gonna carry on today recording the dialogue for each of these idols. Some of them are doubled up, so they should be a bit faster. No yellow ego cat, and I promise this to all of you now, Promise, hand on heart, there are no more secret surprise plans in the works for interactions with other followers. Like, I have currently have that. It's done. The main thing was the Lucian Inigo thing. That's done. Don't, like, search through the bug fix updates or whatever to think, oh, is there a secret in here? There isn't. It was just the Lucian Inigo stuff. I have my own other projects, which I can't tell you about, but I'm hoping to, you know, I'll announce but there are currently no more secret surprise plans. Although, to be fair, if I were working on secret supplies, surprise plans, I wouldn't tell you. Because they would be secret. So I guess I could be. But I, I'm not. I'm not. I, I, I mean, you'll just have to take my word for it. But I'm not. <laughs> oh. Anyway. Um, one thing I would love to know from those of you who are a fan of Lucian's interaction patches is... What would you like to see Lucian interact with in the future? Now, before you jump in and tell me, Bruma, Legacy of the Dragonborn, all that sort of thing. Not talking about that sort of thing. I'm talking about small-scale stuff. Because small-scale stuff lends itself really well to these streams. Now, this Saints and Seducers patch has gone on for way longer than I wanted it to. You know, it's a no, 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 modded stuff. No, stop. Hold, wind it back, Lich Demons. Let me finish explaining what I mean. I'm talking about optional plugins, which I can release entirely separate to the main Lucian mod, because I don't want to make any edits to the main Lucian mod anytime soon, because I want to be able to just patch that for bugs that get reported over the next few weeks, although I'm hoping there won't be any more, but you know, I don't want to have stuff that's half in there, which will hold me back. So I'm talking about optional plugin stuff, and I'm talking about small scale. Now, these Creation Club plugins are ideal because they're so small scale, and if you'd like to see more of those, let me know. Uh, let me know which creation club thing. So there's a request for goblins and a request for unicorns. I'd love to do goblins. Um, and the unicorn comes from the wild horses one, doesn't it? That could be interesting as well. Divine Crusader could be an interesting one to do. So I'm just going to stress one more time for those of you who are uncertain what I mean. I'm not talking about stuff for the main Skyrim game. Not interested because I'm not working on that right now. What I'm talking about is I'm after a general idea of what optional plugins you're interested to make Lucian interact with other files such as the Creation Club. And I'm after small scale stuff that will only take a few weeks of patches to do. It can be Creation Club because I love doing Creation Club interruptions because they're DLC, they're canon, they plug in with, you know, they're, they're, they're um, they're small scale, so they fit nicely with the streams, and I'm adding voice acting to them, so I'm increasing their value. But I'm also up for doing other small mods as well, potentially, provided that they don't conflict with the canon established by the main game, the Creation Club DLC, or beyond Skyrim, because I'm treating that as canon as far as the mod's concerned as well. Spell Knight could be cool, yeah. I think there could be some quite good comedy with goblins. The goblin sound is cute. I still haven't actually played goblins, but I've seen footage of it. I've got it, I just need to get around to playing it. So I'm not going to do Clockwork. Clockwork gets requested a lot, but I'm not doing it. And the reason I'm not doing it is because it's designed to be played without followers. It's a single player thing. And then you guys say to me, ah, but what about comments he could have after the quest chain? But just bear in mind for a minute my bug reports and my posts. So if I release a plugin that says 
Lucian clockwork interactions. Even if I put a big massive readme there saying Lucian will not comment on the main quest of clockwork with this patch, he will only comment after the quest, you can't bring Lucian with him, people will not read that and I will still get tons of bug reports and comments, probably on a weekly if not daily basis, telling me, Lucian, I've brought him with me on the clockwork quest, I had to teleport him in because he wouldn't go there on his own, and he's not saying anything, one out of ten broken mod fix. It would just happen. So I'm sorry. I'm not doing it. I'm sure it's a really cool mod, but I'm going to prioritise mods that Lucian can actually come with you for and comment on without having to wait until after the quest is finished or any caveats like that. Dawnfang and Dustfang is nice and contained. It's just a dungeon and a few swords. I could probably polish that one off in a couple of streams. That could work well. Now, I haven't actually played Forgotten Forgotten Seasons. I would uh, I would like to do... I'd like to play... I might play that with Dave on one of the Saturday streams. Because I've heard great things about it and I've got it. I just haven't got around to playing it. Uh, but I believe that's quite a big dungeon, isn't it? Quite a lengthy thing that might take quite a few streams to do. Hey, Cthulhu, and welcome to the stream. So, Worm's Tooth, I would love to do Halloween Addict, but I'm really after smaller scale things that wouldn't take me ages. Because I want them, I'm talking about stuff to do on stream. And this Saints and Seducers thing is a relatively small DLC, but it's taken us 10 weeks to do. Now, admittedly, I'm not a very fast worker in these streams because I spend a lot of time just chatting to you, as demonstrated from the fact that it's already 5.40 and we haven't actually done any modding yet. But, this has taken us 10 streams to get this far. Worm's Tooth would take us, like way more than that so i'd rather it were just something that i work on in my own time rather than doing this kind of consistent streaming to show you the constant progress with it um but yeah all good ideas thank you even if i'm not responding to them in the chat i am reading them so thank you for all these suggestions they're very good to know thank you for continuing the sub doll vader I would have to look into the coin toss mod diabetic monster because it sounds like the sort of thing that would be quite tricky to have dialogue for because it, it's not i'd have to be detecting a particular event which is very difficult to get right you know my idle stuff is all conditioned so if you look at this stuff i don't know how much you know about modding but if you have a look at these idle lines you'll see you know get stages and things and they're just on a random 23 second timer they're randomly picking a line that's valid and if these things are true at that time then he'll say it it doesn't really work so well for detecting a specific one-off event that isn't controlled by a quest chain or another by a quest stage so i'm not quite sure how i do that um lucy and the dragonborn maybe maybe one day we could do that i don't want to necessarily confirm what lucy and the dragonborn will be doing in future quests uh, the series will be resuming later this year. I'm determined to make that happen. I can't tell you when because I don't know again. But at some point I will be resuming that series and we'll be trying all sorts of quest mods. Well, the problem is, Diabetic Monster, the only way I could think to do that would be to modify the script. You know, I'd have to modify the coin toss script to add on a thing to it saying, do the coin toss and then trigger a Lucian line, which would mean if the creator of that mod then went back and added, you know, changed the script themselves, my Lucian plugin would then conflict with it. So I'd then have to update my Lucian plugin to reflect their changes, and generally I'd be opening up myself to a bit of a world of hurt. And I'm not quite sure how I could get around with that, so I'll be honest, it's probably unlikely. Right, okay, so let's start recording some of this dialogue. So I'm going to need my sound editing software open. Now, fair warning, as ever, sometimes when I open this editing software, the sound drops out on the stream. It's because the sound card doesn't like to share between two different bits of software. It can happen sometimes. If it does happen, don't panic. I will fix it as soon as possible. I'm sure it'll only be a few minutes. However, it probably won't happen. It'll probably be fine. I'm just warning you that if we do lose the sound, it's not your fault. It's on my end, and I'll fix it. Okay? Okay. 
opening the software now. Hey, Sacrilicious, welcome to the stream. So we're going to need our pop filter for recording dialogue today in order to get rid of those plosives. See, that's not a fun sound, is it? Uh, whereas with this in the way, it's a bit better. You see? Makes a difference. At least I hope it does. So, it's still not perfect, but it does help filter them. Let's get that in place. I usually don't use it for streams because it covers up a bit more of my face and I like you guys to be able to uh, to see me. Uh, but, you know, for recording, it's important that we've got it there. Can you still hear me? I hope you can. Yes, it is still working. That's good. Lucian Top Secret. So this is another thing I was keen to avoid showing you. This is where I recorded all the Inigo lines in this file called Lucian Top Secret. And none of them have any clues in the name. It's really confusing because normally I always give my files intelligent names, like really clearly showing me what this file is. So I'd call it Lucian Sinks and Seducers Idol 1. Whereas with these top secret lines, it's just top secret A, top secret B, top secret C. It's really confusing. <laughs> the lengths I go to to not reveal these things in advance. Anyway. Oh, here comes Tiny Lucian. Smooth Seeker, I've always seen Lucian as a battle mage with a spell in one hand, a sword in the other, and some light armor to boot. It's why I always get him the light Dwemer armor from Creation Club, because it fits his character a lot into my eyes, and it's definitely a better polystyrene. Do you mean polystyrene? Is that a typo? It's definitely a better polystyrene for him than make him a ranger like every other follower in my party. I'm not sure you mean polystyrene. I think that might be an autocorrect. But I'm not sure. Do let me know, Smooth Seeker. I'm fascinated to know what word you meant to type there. Or whether this is some kind of hip new slang I've not heard of. Playstyle! That makes sense. Oh, just better in your eyes. Oh, okay, better play. Okay, right. Better in your eyes. And it was an autocorrect. That's really funny. <laughs> oh. I get what you're saying, though. Um, I always play him uh, as a mage. Well, no, I play him, I get my Lucian to, when I'm testing him or I'm playing with him along, uh, I, uh, I tell him to fight however he likes, to let him do his thing, or make him a mage, one of the two, but I like teaching him spells, because it really appeals to the completionist collector in me to collect all the spells and teach them to him so that he knows everyone, even when they're ones that he'll very rarely cast, like Bound Sword. I still like to teach them to him because it makes me really happy to see all the names appear on the checklist in the MCR in the MCM. Um, it just it just really satisfies that itch in me uh, to do that. So that's what I go for, and I think a lot of people feel the same kind of about it. But he is designed that he is viable. You know, he, you should be able to make him a barbarian warrior. If, well, not barbarian, but you know, a tank or a mage or an archer or whatever. You know, none of them. Uh, is better than the other. It's just if you go down the magic route, obviously you get all the spell teaching and that's quite fun. My favourite, I was talking about this in the Discord the other day, my favourite spell to teach him, and I recommend this to any of you, is Mimic's Cloak from Apocalypse. You have to get his illusion up to level 75 to do it. But if you do that, you can teach him Mimic's Cloak, and what that means is any spell that's cast near Lucian by the enemy is automatically recast by him right back at them. And it's so chaotic, it's brilliant. It means if you're shooting fireballs at him, then he shoots fireballs straight back, and he just becomes this engine of magical destruction. And it's amazing. So, so do that. Yeah, if you head onto my website, Sanctus Carnis, if you just search Joseph Russell Author or Joseph Russell Lucian or whatever, you'll find the website. You will find a bunch of articles there, and one of them is a list of all the spells he can learn, including all the spells from Apocalypse that he can learn. You know, there's a list of all the spells you can teach him from Apocalypse, from the main mod, and from, um, sorry, Apocalypse from the main vanilla game, and from the Arcane Accessories Creation Club file. There's a list of them all there. So, uh, have a look on my website and you can see that. But it's so cool. But it's very rare that anyone will get his illusion up to level 75. It's a ridiculously high requirement, and there's basically none, no other spells he can learn with illusion. Maybe, like, one. Hardly, it's, there's, I can't remember. But it, it, most illusion spells aren't castable by NPCs because of the way they're set up. You know, thing, uh, things like fear, Frenzy. When should an NPC cast friendly, Frenzy? When is that an appropriate spell to cast in battle? It's very difficult to know. So, um, you won't... Uh, so, most illusion spells he can't cast. But Mimic Cloak he can. So, that's fun. Will you ever get more Doomsbathar stuff, like interactions with him? Yes, if you're a fan of Doomsbathar, then you can look forward to Lucian's third personal quest, which will not be set in the Doomsbathar dungeon, but 
will feature Doom's Refer the character in a big way. So you can look forward to that. I have lots more plans of what I'm going to do with the character of Doom's Refer uh, in the future. Because let's be honest, I'm running out of ways to justify voicing every character in the mod. <laughs> and I've got Lucian and I've got Doom's Befar by putting a big filter on my name. And I'm also using my Khajiit voice for Jacuzzi and my Dunma voice for Dave. I haven't got many more voices that sound particularly different to Lucian in my back pocket without making it obvious that it's the same actor playing each of the characters. So <laughs> reusing the existing characters is a much better way of making quests. <laughs> um, unless I have to hire voice actors and everything, but that's always a very difficult process. Doom's with our follower confirmed. Absolutely not. I've confirmed nothing of the sort. But all I'm saying is that he will have more to do in the future. Yeah, okay. So volunteer voice act. I've talked about this before on stream. I don't want to bore you guys with this stuff. And I'm aware I've just been prattling for the last 50 minutes and not modding. But the problem with working with voice actors is that with this modding work, people have real lives right and volunteer work people are doing for free and you have to do it for free uh, generally speaking in order to fit with um bethesda's terms of service and make sure i'm not walking any lines there um and people get busy so if i cast a voice actor say as is often requested if i were to cast a voice actor for lucian's mother that's great i might get a bunch of lines recorded but i work on lucian constantly and i plan to keep developing him for the next few years at least until elder scrolls 6 comes out and if I want to reuse the character of Lucian's mother again at any point in the future, I need to get back in touch with that voice actor and get them to record more lines. And they might be busy. They might have retired from modding. They might be ill. And if any of those things are the case, I need to recast the character again and get a new voice actor on and get them to revoice all the previous lines. And then if I fight, if they, even if they are up for it, I have to wait for them to go and record all their lines. You know, I have to wait for them to get back to me and they might not be free for another six months. You know, it takes ages a lot of the time working with voice actors. And the whole thing is just so much faster and more reliable and more efficient if I just stick to voicing everything myself because it means I can just do it. You know? I can just do it. I can just say, okay, I want to record those lines and I can record them that evening and it's done. So that is why I shy away from bringing on extra voice actors unless I absolutely have to. Because in the interest of getting this content done as fast as possible... Everything is so much more efficient if it's um if it's me, you know. So that's that's why a lot of these large scale follower mods are voiced by one person who is also the creator of the mod. It's not always the case, but it allows us a certain freedom that makes our life a lot easier. See you, oh dear a rat. Yeah, there's, I could voice Lucian's mother like a Monty Python voice, yes. Hello, Lucian! Welcome home! Come on and have a cup of tea! Oh, isn't it nice? Tell me all about your adventures in Skyrim! How fascinating! You know. I don't think I made Lyra butch enough there, either, because Lyra is a, you know, is a soldier. She probably wouldn't speak like that, she'd probably more speak like this. Hello, Lucian. Welcome. I don't know. How do you do a high-pitched impression voice that's also low-pitched? I'm not sure. Anyway, let's do some voice acting. So I'm going to have to warm up into this, which for those of you, you probably know this by now because you're always often the same people who keep coming back. Um, for some reason, you seem to keep coming back to my streams and it's lovely that you do. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to have to warm up into Lucian to get my voice into the right sort of pitch, which is going to take me a little bit of me uh, doing Lucian.exe has crashed. So uh, you'll just have to bear with me uh, as I run through some lines to get myself in the right area. Um, hello there. My name is Lucian Flavius. Hello. Oh, marvellous! I say, goodness me. My name is Lucian Flavius. I'm a scientist, philosopher, amateur wizard, and something musician, though I suppose that's more of a hobby, really. I'm here in Skyrim on an expedition, academic mainly. I find the province simply fascinating. The flora, the fauna, the ruins, both Duema and Nordic, the architecture, the politics. <laughs> Trouble is, I'm really not much of a fighter. I know a few spells and I can just about swing a sword, but beyond that, I'm pretty much useless in combat. 
Skyrim's no place for a milk drinker like me. Not on my own anyway, so I'm looking for someone to travel with. Right. That's more in the right kind of pitch. There we are. Ready to voice Lucian. Marvellous. Splendid. Goodness me. Lucian.exe has encountered an error. I said to the hip, the hop, the hippie, the hippie, to the hip, hip, hop, you don't stop the rocking till the bang, bang, boogie said up, jump the boogie to the rhythm of the boogie, the beat. Right, um, let's record some lines. And I'll just, of course, test that the microphone is working with this. Test, 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 test. Yep, those are waveforms that look good to me. And I'll just play that back through my headphones to make sure we've not got any funny crackling or buzzing or anything. Uh, oh, where's my headphones gone? Oh, yeah, because that would be really law-friendly, wouldn't it? Turns out, unexpectedly, Lucian actually brought rap to Tamriel. There we go. Working now. See you, Cthulhuin. Lovely having you drop by. Or in the words of Lucian, bye, Cthulhuin. I've got your back, Cthulhuin. Cthulhuin must away, ere break of day. To find their long forgotten gold. Far over the misty mountains cold. Right. It sounds like those bandits are giving poor Rassad a terrible time. I think we ought to sort it out for him, don't you? Need to close my window because there was background noise there. Let's do one more take. That first one wasn't too bad, but we'll try once more. It sounds like those bandits are giving poor Assad a terrible time. I think we ought to sort it out for him, don't you? That armour these bandits were wearing was quite remarkable. No, come on. L -l 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 Lucian Flavius, at your service. A swig of tea will probably help me here. Ah, marvellous. That armour these band... That armour... One more time. Are we still recording? Yes, we're still recording. Good stuff. That armour these bandits were wearing was quite remarkable. Let's have a look around. I'd love to find out more about it. Ooh, a journal. Love a good journal there. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, a journal there is. Ooh, a journal. Ooh, a da oh, come on. Let's do it. You can do this. I don't know why I'm struggling so much with the whole voice today. Ooh, 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 how do you do an ooh? I've forgotten how to do ooh. I say ooh in life, ooh. Ooh. Ooh, a journal. Love a good journal, they're always full of clues. Step one of being a bandit leader, write down your evil plan. Never fails. Looks like we ought to pay this kinfowl fellow a visit. You know, the stabby kind. Right, I suppose we'd better see if we can find another handy journal. Consider my eyes thoroughly peeled. Aha! Another clue. A wizard named Thoron living in solitude. It's not much to go on, but it's something. Hmm. My word, what in the world are you? Surely not an elytra. How did you get here? And 
locked up in a cage like that. Poor thing. Svarig, indeed. Sounds like something, something sounds like something. Somebody once told me the world was gonna roll me. Svarig, indeed. Sounds like something, so I did it again. Sounds like someone. Svarig, indeed. Sounds like someone we need to chat to. I'm sure they'll be entirely reasonable and non-violent with us. One more time. Oh, when there's an aeroplane. Oh, well, that's probably a good time to pause for a moment and start a new, fresh recording. Oh, Grey wants to come back in. Come and say hello to everyone, then. Come on. She literally just knocked on my door and ran away. Yeah, you did. You did. Just knock on the door and run off. You're causing problems. Yeah. Anything to say into the microphone? No? No? No. Okay, off you go then. She, of course, is now going to jingle all through this recording and cause no end of problems for us. Uh, so I'll take this opportunity to export some of this dialogue while she settles down, I think. Somebody once told me hands off my macaroni. And the years start coming and they don't stop. So much to do, so much to see, something, something, something. It sounds like those bandits. It sounds like those bandits are giving poor Assad. Lovely, that was a good take. I'll export that. Export audio mix down Lucy and Saints and Seducers Idol. Numero, no, that's not how we spell idle. Idle. Vun. Hello, Gamer Victor. Welcome to the stream. No. That armor. There we go. Yeah. Here's that take that actually went right of that armor. Hey, Devil Signed, welcome to the stream. Hydrate, certainly will. Good for you, a singular bee. That's a very useful talent. I'm sure people are very impressed by it at parties. No, I've got to listen to myself say ooh hundreds of times. Hi, Armator. Welcome to the stream. Greetings and salutations unto you. And she wants to go. No, she doesn't. <laughs> She's playing with my dressing gown strap. Do you want to leave? Or do you just want to kill the, the dressing gown thing? I think she just wants to kill it. Okay. Predator in action behind me. Don't know whether you can see. Um, 
I'll give her a minute to consider whether she does actually want to leave. And if she does, I'll open the door. So here's the line about Kinthal. Bum, 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 bum. Ba -da -da -bum, bum, ba -da -da. Hey now, you're an all-star. Get the show on, get paid. Right, I suppose we better see if we can find another handy journal. Yeah, that was a good take. These were all quite good takes eventually. Another aeroplane. We seem to be getting more aeroplanes again at the moment. I don't know whether they're stepping up travel again after like a year of not having it. Another clue. Oh, that's fun. Look at that. Look at that waveform. Normally they're more or less symmetrical. But sometimes sounds like, hmm, can look funny. Look at that. You see, it's not symmetrical. It goes down like that and it goes down like that. Weird, isn't it? I don't really know enough about sound engineering to know why that's a thing. I just, uh, I just do the thing and export it and we're good. Uh, there's a travel ban in the UK, Morgan Knives. We're not allowed to uh, go abroad at the moment. Hmm. Gray's gone somewhere else to cause problems. Round the back of my bedside table. What were you doing back there? Don't know. Oh, the years start. So, what's your favourite Lucy and Inigo interaction? Without necessarily spoiling the full thing. Like. Like a one word name for it, just so I, we know what you're talking about. What's your favourite one that you've discovered so far? Because you guys have had more time to discover them since last time I streamed. What's the best one? Thank you so much for the sub, Wenny Eb. Really glad you're enjoying it. That's so nice. Thank you. This is so interesting. You all have different favourites. In fact, so far, like six or seven of you have responded and you've each chosen a different one as your favourite. That's really nice. Still all your favourites. We just had the first repeat. Diabetic Monsters just said impressions, which is the same one as we had before with the science, science, science thing. So we got two votes for that one as being favourite, but all the rest have been completely different. That's so interesting. That means we did a good spread of them. Nice variety. I loved the impressions one. I have to say, when you write, when you're working on a Google Doc with Smart Blue Cat, Gary, and you write in it saying, your best Lucian impression here, and then you just send it off, and then he put on it, like, as a comment, like, Lu Inigo doing, uh, doing Inigo doing Lucian, challenge accepted. And... He just, uh, you know, and then he sent through that dialogue of Inigo doing an impression of Lucian, and it's just brilliant. It's and because it, it's me, you know, it's doing impression of me, but through the filter of Inigo, which is just such a surreal thing as someone who's been an Inigo fan for years, long before I started work on Lucian. You know, to have here Inigo doing an impression of pretty much my real life voice, only a bit posher, is so bizarre. I love it. Hello, Collins Wrath. Welcome to the stream. Ragnar the Bread, I can claim no credit for, except slightly the musical arrangement of it. 
Uh, but Ragnar the Bread, I logged on to the Google Doc one day and and Gary had just written that. And I was like, well, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. That's going in there. And we did it. But um, the, the timing doesn't quite work a lot of the time with it because it, for some reason the, there's slight variations in delay between lines depending on your particular pc setup i tuned the timing for the lines to work exactly right on my pc on the understanding it'll be slightly different on yours but uh, i think it almost matches well enough enough people have reported it does match i know there's a couple of times it doesn't quite match but um you know that little call and response thing they have where they go when his freshly baked bread oh his freshly baked bread yes his freshly baked bread rolled around on the floor that was my idea, and I thought that was quite fun. I think it works out quite nicely. Um, yay, I'm glad it works perfectly for you. 991. And Teddy, you think they're spot on? And the singular bee, well, that's good then. If it's working perfectly for most of you, that's really good to hear. I have seen a video on YouTube of someone showcasing it where it hasn't quite lined up, which was a little bit frustrating when you spend so long adjusting the timings to get it down to the split second perfect and you just watch and you can see it's just not playing right uh, for someone else. But, you know, so long as it's close enough. Hello again, Butane. Yes, Halloween Addict, that is a bug. That line was never supposed to play for when Lucian and Inigo fight each other. It's only supposed to play in a very, very specific situation. Uh, which you guys who have, you know, if, if there is a situation where Lucian will leave the party and in, enter into combat with you. You know, that you can encounter in the vanilla game. And I don't want to really spoil that for those of you who haven't encountered it. But, you know, there is a situation where that can happen, where he can turn against you. Uh, and in that, that is what that line is for. The Inigo Lucian heartbreaking kind of scene is for if you have Inigo with you during that. But because I'm an idiot, I messed up the conditions in the uh, CK, which meant up until version, in version 1.6.0 and 1.6.1, that line would also play just when Lucian and Inigo had a little scuffle which completely takes the emotional weight out of it completely ruined the timing and i was so frustrated to hear that that was a problem so i fixed it now that scene as of version 1.6.2 will now only play in the very specific situation gary and i intended it to but I'm, I'm just sorry that some of you experienced it in one of those minor scuffles which is really just a bug they're not supposed to scuffle like that that's just skyrim playing up it's not not the situation i intended for that emotional exchange to take place but it's now fixed anyway, so do make sure you've got version 1.6.2 if you haven't updated yet, because it does does fix that problem. I will, uh, of course, because I'm, I'm currently doing on my YouTube channel, which I hope you guys have checked out. Um, I'm currently doing a new series, two new series actually, of uh, Lucian feature showcases. So every Monday... I'm doing a Lucian Inigo interaction, so I'm showing you them all because some of them are quite difficult to find in game. So I thought, might, and some of them will only play in certain situations that you may not actually encounter. So I'm showcasing those interactions every Monday, um, and every Wednesday I'm showing you a new Lucian Reads audiobook thing. So I will at some point showcase you that exact interaction I'm talking about, so you can watch it yourself. Uh, but if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, do check it out because that's where I'll be posting these things. Okay, so next one now. Right, this is the Svarig take, which took loads to do the Svarig line. We'd have to... How many times did I have to repeat it? There we go. This is Svarig. Svarig. Oh, Svarig. Hello, Svarig. We need to have a chat with you. I'm just going to check because there was an aeroplane when we recorded this line. No, I can't hear it in the background, so I think that's all right. I think we'll take that. 
Yeah, why would you make them fight? They're friends. They're good friends. Don't make them fight. But also, that particular scene I'm talking about has two different variants, one of which is for when they're earlier on in their relationship arc, so when they just know each other, and there's a second variant for when they were when they're friends, you know, which is even more heartbreaking, I think. Uh, personally, what it was intended to be anyway. So there's two versions of it, depending on where you've got their relationship to. And then Lucy, uh, Inigo has different comments, you know, afterwards, based on how well he knew Lucian as well, when he was alive. So there's that stuff there. And some of those will play if Lucian happens to die during your playthrough. You know, I mean, usually that'll only happen if you've killed him. But, you know, he, uh, he has lines for Lucian being dead, which you'll discover. Which is quite sad as well. I like that emotional stuff. It's fun. You know. It's fun. It gets fun to play. I mean, I appreciate it. it's not quite so fun to experience in games. Sometimes it can be a bit heart hurty. But it's fun to voice as an actor. To be able to do stuff that's a bit more of a dynamic range than just going, Oh, marvellous! About everything. That's correct, Bard. There is a metric for their friendship being measured. Based on which conversations have played. So it's pretty much based on how many how many times how many conversations they've had but they have three ranks they have well four ranks there's rank level zero which is when they don't know each other rank level one which is acquaintances rank level two which is friends and rank level three which is best buddies which unlocks a few more of those really uh lovely buddy conversations so you will you'll as you go through each of those stages you'll unlock more scenes between them and they'll use different words about each other so obviously you have the whole julian thing to start with, uh, and then as their relationship pro progresses, that turns from Inigo taking the mick out of Lucian into a recurring gag for them, and then into a uh, sort of affectionate callback. Uh, and then they'll also start using a f more affectionate terms like my friend uh, and my dear Inigo, etc., as they get closer. So there is there is an arc there. It is a dynamic AI system, well not AI, but you know it's 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 more than just having these are the set lines that they'll play on a loop in a random order. There is an arc we intended. Hey Nuno, welcome to the stream. Thank you for the follow, bro man dude dog bro. Yeah, we love a good arc. Narrative arcs, it's fun. Interesting. Right, let's record some more. Okay. Gosh, another elytra. But this one's a different colour. Fascinating. Aha! Another clue. A wizard named... Gray, stop jingling your bell. Stop. Desist. Hush. Shush. Aha! Another clue. A wizard named Thoron living in some sewers somewhere. It's not much to go on, but it's something. Hmm. Ah, now this sheds a bit more light on the situation. Thoron, the chap behind all this, is hiding in the... Oh, I messed up that line. There's a, there's a mistake there. Look. I've got a double is. Ah, now this sheds a bit more light on the situation. Thoron, the chap behind all this, is hiding in the solitude sewers. Sounds splendidly smelly. Bum 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 I'm glad you think so, Tot. I did try to condition it all very carefully and make it as good as I possibly could, you know. We haven't just slapped it all in there on a random on a random probability thing and just let it go, you know. We put some effort into trying to condition it, right? Yeah. 
You're very welcome to ship Lucian in and go if you want to. I don't mind. I don't mind what you guys had canon. You know, it's quite interesting to see what you come up with with fanfics and whatever. Um, it's just uh, romance is not something I'll ever be exploring in the main mod, or some, certainly not something I plan on ever exploring in the mod. Yo, to Randor, Lucian's conversations with other modded companions are almost never triggered because they're set to be very rare. Um, because there aren't as many of them as there are with Inigo, so they're designed to not repeat as often because obviously there's less variety there. However, you'll find in version 1.6.1 1 and up, they play more often than they used to if you're in a party of three or more because they only play if you're within a certain distance of the other follower, if Lucian is close enough to the other follower. And obviously if you're in a larger party, because they space out, the chances of them being near each other if you've got more followers at a time is lower, so the interactions are less likely. Um, however, in version 1.6.1, .1, I increased that radius for the conversation to be valid. So yes, they won't be standing quite so near, so they might be calling across to each other a bit more. But it should make that those interactions play more when you're in a large party. Or rather, it should reduce the effect of them playing less when you're in a larger party, if that makes sense. See you, check. Oh, there are tons of Lucian Flavius fanfics Halloween. If you have a look on Archive of Our Own, there's loads of them. And also in the Discord, we have a whole uh, we have a whole channel dedicated to people's writing, and there's a lot of fanfics featuring Lucian in there. And I've read some really nice ones on Tumblr as well. I don't seek them out, but I read them when they come my way, when I have time, which isn't very often, but... I do think it's interesting to see what people do with my character. So this is our, our hat, another clue. Which should be that one. And then, gosh, another elytra. Here we are, this is it. This is the tape we want. There we go. No, I'm not upset by the fanfics. The only thing that does upset with me with fanfics is if people aren't true to his character. You know, if people deliberately mess him up or do, you know, do things that are out of character for him. That's not really fun. Um, you know, if they deliberately create, you know, if they're deliberately trying to be nasty with him in some way, then obviously I don't enjoy that. But, um... To be honest, pretty much every fanfic I've ever read has been very true to his character. So, you know, generally speaking, the community's done a lovely job with their fanfictions of him. Bum ba dum bum 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 I just think it's such a fascinating thing that I write a story and then other people want to continue that story in their own way. I think it's very surreal to think about that it's a character that I've written and that that someone else has wanted to take that and do something with it themselves. Because that's an idea in my brain. You know, that's in my brain. But now it's in your brain. And it's like it, it was mine. And now it's gone out into the world. And it's ended up in yours. And how did that happen? It's very strange. Yep, Jotun Randor, I am. That's what we're doing today. Nearly finished. Hopefully should be able to finish it in this stream. Then again, I'm often a bit too optimistic about... um. <laughs> about how much I can get done. Doesn't always pan out, but I try. Oh, this sheds a bit. This is the Thoron thing, okay.
Now there was a little click there. I'm just going to replay it a couple of times to make sure that that's on the line end and not on the... Ah, no, the line is fine. The little click was obviously my headphones playing up. Good stuff. We can export that then. Super trooper, lights are gonna blind me, but I won't feel blue. Ba ba, super ba. De da do da do ba ba, super ba. Cause somewhere in the crowd there's you. Why? Okay. She was sleeping really soundly right up until the moment I opened my mouth to record, and now she's woken up and started jingling again. Great, go back to sleep. You were sleeping. Go to sleep. <sighs> maybe she objects to Abba. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I suppose we ought to let Rissard know the bandits have been sorted out. I'm sure he'll be delighted to hear the roads are safe again. Or at least, as safe as they ever get. Listen to that back. I think there might have been jingling in the background. Ah! No, I can't hear jingling in the background of that, so I think it's fine. You got away with it this time, Grey. My nemesis. Okay, just while she jingles, while I let her settle down to sleep, let's export these lines and import them into the creation kit, because that's a job that needs doing. Somebody once told me, which was quite a strange thing to say. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, 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 bum. I think there's something wrong with your K key there, Smooth Seeker. This is quite a challenging sentence to read. Where you go playing a Dedek Elf with Imperious Race Mukud. And Yukur ancestors trick you into fighting a pack of werebears. Those gosh darn ancestors. Sorry, I don't mean to take the mick, it's just funny. I hope you're not offended. Yami says, not as any worse than I normally would if I didn't spell check my stuff. Right, let's hook these idols up to the real world then. The real world, the modding world, the game world. The world of Skyrim. So here we are. On the left over here, we has got... Oh, hang on one second, actually. Ba, 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 ba. I need to change something. So that that doesn't pop up while I'm sharing my screen. Because we don't want that. Okay, that's better. Cool beans. Right, back to the screen share. So. Here are all the lines. I'm going to drag them over. Nope, they don't go there. What are you doing, Joseph? You're a fool. You know nothing. Nothing! 
Thou fool. We need Lucian Saints and Seducers patch dot ESP. That be what it is called. This is the uh, where we want to drop it. There you go. We take that. We take it. We take the fire and we put them over here. We're going to take the fire. We put them over here. There you go. We put the fire there. It's very good. Yes. Hydrate. Hello, Karen. Welcome. Posture check. Thank you, Yami. I was slouched over like nobody's business there. Awful for my back. Okay, so we now take the file. We now need to rename the file. So we're going to open up the creation kit. We open the thing. We go over here. We go over here. We're going to take this one. And we're going to say over here, we're going to take this line. And we're going to give it to this one. Suddenly Italian Khajiit. Why not? Hello, it is Jacuzzi. Jacuzzi here. My name is Jacuzzi. And I'm here to sort out your plumbing. So uh, I'm gonna jump in the pipe. I'm gonna go down. I'm gonna beat up the evil mushroom. I'm gonna rescue the princess. Then I'm gonna come back. We're gonna meet Luigi. He's gonna be lovely. Okay. Wahoo. Sorry, is, is Super Mario Brothers not a documentary about Italy? That's my misunderstanding. Apologies there. <laughs> so now this line needs copying. Now, had I been sensible, I probably could have set these up as shared infos rather than the same line registered twice. But I'm not sensible. I am a fool. So this is what we're doing. Come on, drag. Oh, why aren't you doing it? There you go. That's the one we need to rename now. So that's that armor was quite remarkable. Bum, 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 bum. Ba dee 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 dee. Mana mana. Ba bee dee beep. Goodbye, diabetic monster. I hope you have a lovely day. Hey, hey. Goodbye, monster. Have a lovely day. This one will make a happy line, actually, because it's a joke. Well, he's being comedic. Oh, I might yawn. Oh, I feel a yawn coming on. Ugh, will be all these late nights I've been having. Bum, bum, bum. Oh, I've got you under my skin. Oh, I've got you deep in the heart of me. So deep in my heart that you're really a part of me. Oh, I've got you under my skin. Yep, there is a dark mode for the CK, Sanctus Canis, or rather there is if you're using New Chem's SSE creation kit fixes, which we are. So if you're interested in a dark mode, I highly recommend picking that up. Oh, I'd sacrifice anything come what might for the sake of having you near. In spite of a warning voice that comes in the night and repeats. At least I think there is. Right, I suppose we'd better see if we can find another handy journal. Consider my eyes thoroughly peeled. Thank you for the follow, Leverage Lil. I'm pretty sure, okay, I might be wrong. I'm pretty sure 
that I found, you know, that I've seen a reference to a dark mode in the change log for new chems SSE fixes. I might be chatting absolute nonsense with that, but I'm pretty sure that there is. But you'll have to look it up on the um on the Nexus and see. Because I'm not I couldn't tell you how to do it because I've never tried. I just like it how it is. This is how I expect the creation kit to be. It's how the CK has been for the last few years that I've used it. This is what I expect to see when I look at it. Um, so I don't want to change the scheme. Please don't hold me to it, Teddy. Please don't. Don't. I can't commit to it. I might be wrong. I am only a flawed mortal. Oh, I'd sacrifice anything, come what might, for the sake of having you near, in spite of a warning voice that comes in the night and repeats, repeats in my ear. Don't you know, little fool, you never can win. Why not use your mentality? Wake up to reality. Oh, but each time I do, just the thought of you makes me stop just before I begin. Because I've got you under my skin. Yeah, I've got you under my skin. Do I? Shout out to me from Yotam Randall. Thank you, Yotam Randall. Welcome back, Aurelian's Dogma. Hope your class is going well. How long will I be working on Lucian for, says Leverage Lil? Uh, what do you mean? Do you mean today, or do you mean in my life? Because today we'll be doing another hour and a half in my life. Depends when Elder Scrolls 6 comes out. A few years, maybe? Unless something else comes along. You never know what's going to happen in life. You know, there might be reasons that might come along that might prevent me from... Um, carrying on working on the mod or there might be better opportunities that come along i might get offered a, some kind of creative job who knows but um certainly my plan is to keep working on lucian sort of for the uh the future thank you sanctus canis i'm glad you like my singing we do a lot of it on the stream so if you don't like it that's probably not going to work out very well for you watching my streams. <laughs> Will Lucian ever comment on the pressure he must be feeling adventuring alongside the saviour of a world? Will he ever feel as if he's living in the shadow of the dragonborn? That's interesting. What an interesting idea. Um, I don't want to tell you about that necessarily. You'll have to see what happens in, in future updates and Lucian's third personal quest and, and all of that and the directions the story might go. Well, the thing is, Leverage Lil, the thing with Lucian is, uh, with with a mod, you know, with Skyrim mods, with follower mods, is they're never done. As I said earlier in the stream, there's effectively an infinite amount of content in Skyrim that Lucian could comment on. So there's no way I could ever get to a point where I'd say, right, that's it. The mod is now finished. Because there's always more that you could do. And at the moment, uh, you know, this is a really important income source for me. I certainly wouldn't be able to have my apartment um, when I'm at university if it weren't for, you know, these streams and my Patreon and all of that. So if I just stopped working on Lucian, then I'd lose all of that and then I'd be a bit stuck. So, um, yeah, it's certainly not something I plan on letting go anytime soon. Bard of Foyer. If I got said creative job or something else, would I stop streaming gameplay stuff as well? Um, it depends on the time I have, Bard. Basically, if something else came along that took up all my spare time and I deemed it somehow more worthwhile than doing the streaming modding stuff, then yes, I'd do that instead. But if I have time to do this stuff, I will always do it because I love it. It's great fun doing these streams with you guys. And as I say, it pays my bills. Um, so certainly something I plan on continuing. Oh, that's nice to hear. I'd miss you guys too.
One thing to bear in mind, of course, is should I ever find myself in a situation where I was settling down with a family one day, which, gosh, that would be a very long way away. But uh, depending on how many years we keep doing this, if I ever found myself becoming a father or anything like that and having tiny little Josephs running around, um, I don't know whether I'd necessarily have time to keep streaming and all of that as well as that, as well as that and a job and all of that. I don't know. Um, so I, I, one never knows what will happen in the future. You're very welcome to share fan art in the Discord server, Aurelian's Dogma, or you can post it on Twitter and tag me, anything like that. I love seeing fan art. It's always good fun. I would love to uh, bring Lucian in some form to Elder Scrolls 6 when it comes out, if it's possible. You know, it depends on whether the game is moddable, it depends on whether they decide to add... Um, a player voice that would really scupper me from doing a follower mod uh it depends on a lot of factors but i would love to bring lucian to elder scrolls 6 Sparring, in some form. indeed sounds like someone we need to chat to i'm sure they'll be entirely reasonable and non-violent with us so that's this line good job i checked that before just renaming it that could have been a problem So this gets discussed probably every other stream, Aurelian's Dogma. Uh, there are lots of different possibilities of the way I could do it, depending on the time frame that they set. Time is not going to be an issue. The setting of the game would not be a problem. What would be a problem, you know, I can always, I can do a, I could do all sorts of different, you know, time travel shenanigans or whatever. The issue would be whether or not it's viable to mod a follower mod in Elder Scrolls 6. And I would assume, I would hope, there's reason to believe it probably would be fine. But... Uh, you know, because Bethesda are always very supportive of modding, and I don't think they would they would change that for the Elder Scrolls. But one can never be sure until it actually comes out. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> Quite, Stitcher. Marvellous, Daddy! Gosh, that's so marvellous! I say, goodness me! Mama, Papa! Shall we go on an adventure to the library? Gosh, another elytra. Ha! <laughs> that was funny, Bard. Thank you so much for the bits, Rainstorm Wonder. That's very generous of you. Thank you. That's lovely. <laughs> oh, I'm sure I will. I'm sure I will, Stitcher. This is a story of a man named Dave and his epic battle with the evil Lord Bibliotech. <laughs> Russellette sounds like a, uh, a, a band. Introducing, please welcome Joseph and the Russellettes!
Ah, it's Joseph and the Russellettes. Thank you, Russellette Potato. A 60s girl band. <laughs> Right, so we've now implemented all of those and Grey has gone to sleep. So, we might stand a chance at recording the rest of these lines without jingling. Let's give it a go. Grey, do not wake up right now. Just, just, just stay sleeping. Hush, little Grey, Grey, don't say a word. Joe's gonna give you lots of treats if you stay quiet for a bit while I record. Okay, okay, sounds like a plan. Well, here we are. These are some sewers and they are beneath solitude and they smell delightful. Let's find this Thoron chap and get out of here post haste. Goodness me, this is remarkable. Some kind of supersized root network. But you don't just get roots on their own. Is there a city-sized tree somewhere we've all missed? I'll take that one, that line one more time. Goodness me! This is remarkable! No. Goodness me! No, come on. Goodness me! This is remarkable! No, I'm not, I'm not a little more wild. Come on, reset, do it. Hello there! My name is Lucian Flavius. My name is Lucian Flavius, and I've just seen something really fascinating, and now I need to use my fascinated voice. This is really the most amazing, fascinating thing I've ever seen. Oh, wow! Goodness me! This is remarkable! Some kind of super sized root network! But you don't just get roots on their own. Is there a city-sized tree somewhere we've all missed? That was a good take. That's what we like. Right, that's all Thoron dealt with. Spooky magic sword. Should probably grab that. Carefully. That sword? Do you know, I think it might be the Sword of Jigalag. Be very careful indeed with it. I'm not actually sure what it does. Well, that's a very mysterious note. I wonder who this S character is. If we're going to meet them, I feel like we ought to proceed cautiously. Well, she seems nice. One more time. Well, she seemed nice. If there's someone out there smithing more of this madness ore for Thoron's minions, we need to put a stop to it. Don't you agree? Well, that's one less mad. Well, that's one less mad blacksmith for the world to worry about. I wonder if she liked keeping journals as much as everyone else in Skyrim seems to. Gosh, she was a bit bonkers, wasn't she? Good at making fancy armour, though. I should note down her recipes. Might make a good paper one day. Sounds like we ought to head over to Half Moon Mill when we have time. Can't have the secrets of this armour falling into the wrong hands. Again? Just check that's still recording properly and hasn't all aborted. No, that's fine. So the armour is forged with Daedra hearts. Sounds delightful. Not at all splattery. An exotic treasure in Crystal Drift Cave. 
I'm a big fan of treasure, exotic or otherwise. Fancy a trip? Are we sure it's the best idea to put Amber and Madness Ore into the flame? Blah, 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 blah. Yes, yes, excellent. Are we sure it's the best idea to put Amber and Madness Ore into the flames near this corpse? You can always just walk away from these things, you know? Congratulations on your magic hammer! Looks spiky. Wouldn't want to be on the receiving end. This place is bizarre. It's like part of the Shivering Isles is leaking through into Mundus. I can't imagine that's a good thing. I wonder how exactly this place was brought into existence. The root cause, if you will. Get it? One more time. I wonder how exactly this place was brought into existence. The root cause, if you will. Get it? Can you imagine if the plain meld had been with Cheogorath instead of Molag Baal? Baal. Baal, Baal, black sheep. Right. Can you imagine if the plain meld had been with Cheogorath instead of Molag Baal? All of Tamriel could have ended up looking like this. One more time. Didn't quite get it right. Can you imagine if the plain meld had been with Sheogorath instead of Molag Baal? All of Tamriel could have ended up looking like this. The flora down here is extremely interesting. I've never seen anything quite like it. It must be from Oblivion too. Yeah, one more try, one last try. The flora down here is extremely interesting. I've never seen anything quite like it. It must be from Oblivion too. And we're done! We did all the lines! Just need to export these then and we are away! Wahoo! Can I get a wahoo? From the audience? Little round of applause? Little clappy clappy whoop dee doop Yay! Thank you! Hey Tayson, welcome to the stream. Yes, so this does mean the patch is done in terms of I've recorded all the dialogue for it, but jobs remaining. I have to export all this dialogue. I have to import it into the creation kit. I have to, um, I have to uh, go do a check for wild edits and I have to clean it. Um, I have to test it in the game, which is probably going to take a while and probably isn't going to work. I'll be honest, this sort of thing is a little bit complex. We've got some complexities in there that we've implemented regarding the different ways you can start the quest. I would be amazed if all of them work first time. So there's going to be a bit of testing and tweaking that's going to have to happen. Then I need to export the BSA. Then I need to bundle them up and upload them. I might see if any of the beta testers have a copy of Saints and Seducers. I don't know if anyone does. Haven't actually asked. Might be good if we could test it on at least one other PC quickly just to see if it functions basically. But I don't know. Um, and then we'll be good to release. So it might happen this weekend, might be a tall order, might end up being next week sometime. But I'm hoping this should be the last stream on it anyway. And then we can move on to something else next week. Yes, that was a Good Omens reference, Walking Existential Dread. I love Good Omens, it's such a good show! Um, well, I love everything Terry Pratchett's ever been involved with. Um, and uh, I hadn't actually read the Good Omens book, which is, uh, which is terrible. You know, and I do need to read it at some point, but I did watch the show and the show was amazing. Thoroughly recommend. Right, let's export. Export. Which comes from the Latin exportius, which means to export. Trust me, I know these things. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an engineer. <laughs> what would be the point doing comments on unique uniques? That's just the visual replacer, isn't it? 
What sort of comments would work on unique uniques that wouldn't work just on the vanilla artifacts? Okie doke, that'll do. Export. Final Fantasy, Vic Final Fantasy Victory Fanfare starts playing. How does that go? I can't remember. What's the... Uh, uh, how does it go? No, that's the Zelda one for opening a chest. I've, I know I've hummed it before. I've got a mind blank on it, though. Oh, well, it'll come back to me at some point. Goodness me. Goodness me. Goodness me. Goodness me. There we go. That's it. That's the one we want. Metella est mater. Metella modificar. <laughs> oh, that's fun. Let me try it again. Metella est mater. Metella modificarum exportat. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's not real Latin. <laughs> I loved that chapter where Metella exported her popular follower mod. Yes. Yeah, Lucian actually isn't my creation. He's actually an original uh, ancient Roman Skyrim mod uh, that was uncovered by archaeologists a few years ago. And um, uh, yeah, uh, I've, I've rediscovered it and thought I'd bring it forward into the modern day for you. Caecilius Modificarium download it. <laughs> exactly. That's idol number fifteen. Skyrim, the jewel of ancient Rome, exactly. And that's why the Imperials are based on the Romans, because it was a self-insert by Julius Caesar. The more you know. Today I learned. Well, of course they revolutionised PC gaming, Bard. I mean, have you tried the ancient Greek PC games? Not up to snuff. You either die a hero or you see yourself become the villain. What's that linked to? Why, why, why were we saying that? Don't know. But but it's a, it's a cool quote from Batman. Yes, you should, Stitch. You need to teach your students about the ancient Greek and Roman PC games. Because if you didn't, of course, if you didn't cover that, that would be a big gap in their knowledge, Anxious Stitcher. So you'd really be letting them down as a teacher if you didn't teach them about the, uh, the uh, ancient PC gaming communities. They say the Mayans were actually destroyed uh, by microtransactions. Microtrans loot boxes. That's what brought them down. You know, Machu Picchu. It's all about microtransactions. You go over there, you can see you can see the remnants. That saw she seemed a nice line, that was good.
Hey watcher, welcome to the stream watcher. The question is who watches the watcher? Nobody knows. Ha! Rose Thorn, Pyramid Schemes, I love it. Yeah, there's also that. The ancient Egyptians were very into their scripting, though. That's a true fact. I heard they wrote it all in papyrus. Dadum. <laughs> oh. oh, did you write that earlier, Butane? Did I steal your joke? I'm so sorry. I didn't see it. Oh, fair enough. If you got there first, then you have to get the... Oh, you did! Yes, butane. All of the code was uncovered by archaeologists written on literal papyrus. That actually went completely over my head when you wrote it before. Oh, well. Maybe I was subconsciously influenced by it. I can't claim full credit for the joke. There you go. That's one less mad. Shameless shout out from Stitcher to themselves for being accepted in college as a history student. Also, they are taking notes of all these history jokes and loving it. Congrats, Stitcher. Well done. I hope you have a lovely time at college. Or as I like to pronounce it, colleague. Cool leg, exactly. <laughs> How does everyone feel about Bethesda being bought by Microsoft? Uh, I don't really want us to get into a big discussion about that on the stream, if that's okay, because I'm sure people will inevitably get intense about it, because it's the sort of thing people get all hotted up over. But I wouldn't say that's anything for anyone to worry about. It'll be fine. It'll all stay the same, I'm sure. You might see slightly more integration with Microsoft and their accounts or whatever. It might lead to some improvements to Bethesda.net, which would be very welcome if they tidied up that interface. Uh, made it a bit less buggy. Um, but I wouldn't have thought it would be any kind of problem for modding or anything. You know, it'll all just work. It just works, little lies, money flows, look at how fast it grows. What a show. It just works. Bum 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 For an eventual Legacy of the Dragon poem patch, would I consider doing other things besides commentary? But if you're talking about things like making Lucian become a member of the Explorers Guild and whatever, possibly I'm open to the idea of doing that level of interaction more than commentary, but it's trickier and requires participation from the person making the, making the Legacy mod, which is fine in the team, which is great because I've spoken to them and they're really enthusiastic and really helpful, so it should be fine. I just wouldn't want to make any promises about that because any kind of collaboration is always harder to pull off. Um, but yeah, I'm open to making it more than just commentary. We'll see. Shout out to Nuna for not actually crying so far. Well done, Nuna. For when they keep getting stuck trying to change the fan in their PC. Good luck. You can do it. Believe in yourself. Asking Lucian to wear the Explorer's armor in the museum. No, I probably won't do that. Outfit systems are a nightmare. 
I don't know if you've played much with outfit systems and other follower mods, but they're notoriously buggy. I don't think I really want to take on that level of uh, grief of trying to do an outfit system. It's just not something Skyrim's really equipped for, and it's just, it's very, very fiddly. We believe in you, Nuna. You can do it if you really try. Do I plan on doing commentary and other mods and stuff aside from CC? Yes, I, I said this earlier in the stream. Yes, absolutely. So we're doing Beyond Sky and Bruma. We're doing Legacy of the Dragonborn. And I'm up for doing... Uh, so those are the two that I've confirmed I'm going to do at some point. I want to do Worm's Tooth and Falscar when I have time. And I was asking earlier for ideas of small things comparable in size to Creation Club that I could do on stream. But uh, there are a few ideas thrown around, but nothing that really grabs me necessarily. The thing about Creation Club that works so well is they tend to be very small. I tend to be able to fire off an, uh, a plug-in for it, you know, over the course of one or two streams, except in the case of Saints and Seducers that's been very big and taken months to do. But, you know, in principle, I can rattle through them very quickly, which works really nicely. And compared to other small mods like that, it is quite popular, the Creation Club, and it's canon, and that's always a big advantage is when it's official content, because that means I can, you know, it has longevity there. Uh, I think it's fairly inevitable that one day we'll get a Skyrim Extra Legendary Edition that includes all the Creation Club content bundled into the main game. That will happen at some point. Halloween Addict, that's not how it's designed. It's not Lucian content being locked behind paid content in the CC. That, that's really not what it is. I'm not taking new Lucian stuff and locking it away and making you pay for it. I'm creating new stuff to make people who have make it even better for people who have the CC. There'll never be anything plot crucial to Lucian in the Creation Club that you'll have to use the Creation Club in order to get. That's not how it works. What I'm doing is adding to this value that people get if they do have the Creation Club. So don't be terrified. It's nothing to be scared of. It's exactly the same as commentary on any other DLC. Shout out to Walking Existential Dread for finishing a project they've been working on for the past three months. Hooray. Well done you. Congrats. And there's also the plus of, from my own point of view, for me, who I use the Creation Club content, I think it's great having more DLC for Skyrim. I think that's a wonderful thing I've been hoping for for years, and finally we're getting more DLC, so that's brilliant. Um, but getting more official DLC, for me, improves my enjoyment of it to have Lucian comment on it, even though I don't, you know, it's a slightly different experience for me using Lucian than it is for you, because obviously I created Lucian, so nothing about him ever surprises me, except lines I've forgotten I wrote. But I think, personally, that having a follower... And so far, Lucian is the only one who does it. Having a follower comment on the Creation Club content gives it voice acting, which is always the thing it's been missing. So for me, having voice acting on the Creation Club quests, even if it's just through Lucian, significantly improves them, I think. Personally, it makes them a lot more fun. Have I considered making Creation Club patches for the crossbow packs? Yeah, okay, so my, my long-term plan is to do interaction patches for all the Creation Club content. I'd like to. Uh, it's just, it takes ages, you know, to do them all. It's a matter of time. And also I want to intersperse that with some other other mods, unofficial mods as well, because I want to keep up doing those. We haven't done one of those in a long time, so I'd like to do some more of that. I try and mix it up, and again, I do what I find fun. Um, but, uh, so yes, I've considered it for the crossbow packs, and that's why I'm kind of asking you guys for your feedback and your suggestions as what you would like me to prioritise with them, you know? So yeah, I'm sure I'll do the crossbow pack at some point. Are there any lines I've forgotten that I wrote that amused or surprised me later? Yeah, it does happen. I'm struggling to think of specific examples now. But Lucian does come out with stuff sometimes that I'm like, did I have no recollection of ever recording that. Some of the stuff that's really early on from like when I did, uh, you know, the first quests and things right back in 2018, was it? 
me, something like that. You know, years ago, some of that stuff, I'm like, oh, blimey. I can't remember, I can barely remember anything that I wrote for the Moonpath plugin. So I'd quite like to play Moonpath again with Dave on my Skyrim playthrough and uh, bring Lucy along and actually listen back to some of the stuff I wrote for it because I can't remember very much of it. Tayson, remind me, what's your mod? You say I could always give Lucy some lines for when my mod is installed. What is your mod? Windhelm Bridge, Archways and Doors. I'll be honest, that's probably not the sort of thing we're really looking to do commentary on. Because <laughs> what would you say? Oh, gosh. These are some nice archways and doors on this bridge into Windhelm. Done. One line. <laughs> Finished. Um, I, I don't know whether there's necessarily a gold mine of content to be had there, but thank you for the suggestion. <laughs> Yeah, I'll be honest, I think that's just mismarketing Halloween Addict. I think Bethesda made a mess of how they marketed the Creation Club content. If they just said, we're doing new Skyrim DLC, here it is, here's the store for it, everyone would have gone nuts for it, they'd have loved it. But for some reason they went round this with, we're doing more DLC, and we're getting modders on board for making it. That's what people have asked for for years, whenever. It's a very common comment you see on mods is, this is so cool, Bethesda should hire you. And Bethesda did hire them to make official DLC, but they so messed up the marketing for it that they made that into something that people saw as negative rather than what they'd been asking for for years. So, but that's how I've always seen it, is it's DLC that they've actually brought modders on to make. I think it's great. Now, did I actually export this line? It is. It's, it's no different to those old smaller Oblivion DLCs. It's certainly Saints and Seducers is a heck of a lot more than horse armor was. Right? So the CC content is in the slightly dubious Sounds canon like area where it's canon until it's not. We have time. Can't have so the it's canon. Like we ought to head over the Half Moon Mill when we have time. Can't have the secrets of this armor falling into the wrong hands. Again? So it's it's canon in that it is, um, uh, well, it's canon for now, but they're never going to let it hold them back from any content in future Bethesda games. So if they want to use Chris Amir in a particular way in Elder Scrolls 6, they're not going to say, oh, we said something about it in the Creation Club content, uh, you know, um, so therefore we can't use it. They're, they're just going to plow on and tell the stories they want to tell with it. So they're quite happy to over... This is my understanding of it, is that they're quite happy to just overwrite the canon. But then again, they've done that before with other things, you know? So much of the lore from Morrowind's kind of been changed, as I understand it. And it's, it's constantly rewriting the lore. So, you know, and if in doubt, you can always just call it a dragon break and have a nice day. You know, just slap the dragon break sticker on it and leave it. Uh, so really anything can be canon as far as Elder Scrolls is concerned. But I certainly consider Creation Club to be a higher level of canon than mods. You know, it's like the main game, any future games Bethesda do, then Creation Club, then mods. It's kind of the canon tier in my, in my head. I'm very glad you think so, Yotam Randall. Anyway, that's me done being massively controversial about the Creation Club, because I know it makes a lot of people angry. Don't worry, uh, we don't need to delve into it anymore, but that's always been my stance on it. Please don't hate me. Umbra is cool, and I really liked the expansion that they did on it, on its lore in the Infernal City and um, Lord of Souls novels. 
which are great books. I liked both of them. And I refer to that lore in Lucian's Umbra plugin. He'll tell you all about the lore from those two books. I love that. I love one of my favourite things to do with Lucian. It just makes me really happy for some reason. One of my favourite things to do with the mod is to add references to other uh, material that came out after Skyrim did. Because it's something the main game can't do, obviously. But because I'm a mod being updated in 2021, I can add those references in. So I reference Legends, I reference ESO, I've even referenced Blades a tiny bit. Um, I think. I'm trying to remember now. Because it's all on the UESP wiki. Uh, and um, yeah, and I can reference those novels. Uh, and it's great. I love bringing in that wider lore. Well, the good thing you can know about Lucian that's an advantage when it comes to canon is even if when the Elder Scrolls 6 comes out, and if it makes some kind of law thing, and I can't possibly imagine what could ever do it, but if they made some kind of sweeping law decision to say that somehow made it impossible for Lucian to still be canon, I will still be around, because I'm not planning on leaving the modding community, so I will be able to jump in, even if I can't make Lucian for Elder Scrolls 6 or anything, or I can still write you a short story. You know, I will do my darndest to come up with an explanation to make Luce, to force Lucian to fit into the canon. So I can retcon him to make him canon again. So every time Bethesda do something that would be not canon, I can course correct to make it canon again. So as far as you're concerned, uh, Lucian can always be head canon. You can head canon. He can be canon if you want. You know, I can... So long as I'm alive, I can keep tweaking it to make it canon. I don't know. I can't think of any examples, Watcher. I guess if they somehow declared that the Imperial City had never existed and was all just an illusion and Imperials didn't really exist and were all actors employed by the Thalmor. There's a conspiracy theory for you. Um, then I could say, well, Lucian's from an alternate universe where the Imperial City did exist. Ah, yes, that would be a problem, Watcher, if Todd Howard got on stage and explicitly said Lucian's not canon. Does Lucian have any lines for the Dragonborn being a werewolf form? Yes, he does. He has some jokes. If in doubt, Lucian probably has jokes about these things. And yes, Lucian has jokes about you being a werewolf. That's a very good point, Ninja. A sign that says there is no Lucian Flavius feels like a very Lucian thing he would do to try and make himself incognito. <laughs> Just walk around with a sign saying, I'm not real. Does Lucian have comments on your weapon of choice? Yes, he does. Lots of various weapon comments in there and armor comments. There's the root cause joke. Hang on, let's find the take I liked. This is the one.
And of course, we've got an ESO reference coming up, which is uh, talking about the plane meld, which is straight out of ESO, which is this line I'm about to export here. Can you imagine if the plane meld had been with Cheogorath instead of Molag Baal? Oh, but that was not the tape we wanted. There we go. This is it. Of course, what I could do when the Elder Scrolls 6 comes out in the time before, because obviously that I'm sure they'll release the main game before they release any kind of creation kit. So I'll have to wait until I can start working on any kind of Lucian thing for it. But what I could do in the meantime is I could do a Lucian update for Skyrim that takes into account the lore from Elder Scrolls 6, and he could make references to that. That would be fun. That would be like the ultimate uh, culmination of me taking references from other games. I'd like that. Thank you for the follow, Seminole Gamer. I hope you're having a... a f I'm trying to think of an alliterative word for Thursday that's very good. I hope you're having a thrilling Thursday. That works, doesn't it? Right, we've now exported all the lines and it's 20 past 7. Still doing good for time. Oh, the is Now we're probably done with this, so I'm going to take this pop filter off. Hey now, you're an all-star. Put your hat on, go outside. Wear a mask. That's a good idea, Teddy. I use that Dark Anchors mod. I think it's a fun feature. It's a fun feature. For the show one, get paid. All that glitters is gold. Only shooting stars break the mold. Hey now, you're an all-star. Get your game on. Hey, hey, yo. Hey now, you're an all-star. Today, the role of Smash Mouth will be played by Goofy. No, I'm not going to muscle in on Pro VD's thing. Uh, right. Oh, that's the backup. And then that's 54, which is when we were done with exporting those lips and we recorded the next batch. Very good. So these are the lines that you want. Oh, Bard, don't tempt me. Wash your hands. Stay indoors. Thank you, baked potato. Only visit grocery stores. Thank you, baked potato. Baked potato changed my life. Baked potato showed me the way. If you want to know what's wrong from right, you must listen to what potatoes say. Hey, Panther Brain, welcome to the stream. Lucian doesn't actually have commentary on vampirism yet, but that's something I'll be adding in the Dawnguard update. Okay, so we've got to rename all these lines to make sure that they have the correct name to actually play in game. So what's number 13? Well, here we are. The well, here we are. Well, here we are again. Happy as can be. We are all the Flavius family. Let's go disgust, but only a touch of disgust. Just a little bit, because otherwise it looks quite dramatic. You know, it's sort of like, mm, you just want a little bit, just a touch. Just the slightest touch of Rooney. Super duper, super duper do dan deem dam doom dam doop dup da doop dup da. I'm fascinated to see how many lines we've done for this patch. I can find out in a minute when I've finished exporting these. Cool. 
Because we're getting there. We are going to finish today. We are going to finish. Which patch is this? Panther Brain, this is the Saints and Seducers interaction patch, which is very nearly done. And I hope I can release within the next couple of weeks. This certainly, well, I'm pretty confident this will be the last stream about it. So next week, we'll move on to something else. Who knows what? Because lots of different things have been suggested by people. There is no general consensus. One thing I was thinking of doing next week, because it's very quick, is Rare Curios. So Rare Curios comes with Saints and Seducers. It's um, very tiny. It's, it just adds a bunch of items to the game world, which is nice. But, um, but uh, you know, Rare Curios is a very little CC that adds a bunch of artifacts. And it's included with Saints and Seducers. So if you have Saints and Seducers, you have Rare Curios. Uh, so I thought it'd be a nice one to release sort of at a similar time. It is also separate. So you can get it separately, but you also get it bundled in with Saints and Seducers. Um, so I could, I, I could do, and the thing is, because it's so small, it's just a bunch of items. It would probably only take a stream to do. Well, maybe one stream to write the dialogue and another stream to record it. It'd be very quick, which does appeal. And I, I like the way it places the items in the world. Uh, well, depending on whether you, what mods you use, there are some mods which distribute them better. But um, they feel like the sort of thing Lucian would talk about. I've just given basically a line for him having each of the items and maybe a couple of lines for the player having the items. Goblins I would love to do. I need to play it first because I've still not actually played Goblins. So we can play that on the Dave streams. Wares of Tamriel, I would love to do Lich Demons, but um, I won't do that until after I've done Bruma, I think. Because I want to do Beyond Sky and Bruma. And then I think it would make sense to do the rare cure, do the uh, wares of Tamriel stuff after them, because then I've got more of an awareness of the lore and everything. This is interesting. We've got two scripts attached to these. There was one before with second script as well. I probably better sort that out. I swear I saw it before. There, that one. Remove. Is that actually going to remove it? Who knows? Remove. That'll be when I forgot to uh, change our prefix and then had to rename the scripts manually. So that's something that's worth testing to make sure it works. Yeah, Panther Brain, that'll be a huge problem to do. I'm really not looking forward to doing Civil War because it'll be a huge job. To be fair, Dawnguard's going to be a huge job as well. Doing Lucian's reactions to the vampire side of that questline is going to take months and months and months to do because it's technically going to be a really difficult thing to implement. Because it's not, it's, it's not like so much of follower modding, which is just scaling up the same thing, you know, adding more commentary about different quests. It's just, you know, just having an idle, idle line at the appropriate get stage done. Easy. But uh, doing, which I can do for the Dawnguard side, but to do it for the vampire side of the Dawnguard questline, it's not going to be just Lucian following you around commenting on stuff you're doing, because he'll obviously be really unhappy about it. Um, so I need to be cleverer than that, and that's going to take a very long time. Hey, Butane. So yes, that, that's what I'm saying was the same issue I would have with the Civil War stuff because Lucian would not follow the player to do the uh, the Stormcloak quest chain. He just would not participate in killing Imperials. So I need to figure out how I'm going to respond to that and realistically portray that in the game in a way that's immersive and fits without just completely saying Stormcloak players can't play the mod, you know, without completely alienating them but it needs to be true to his character. So it's more of an alternate path, if you will, that I'll have to do for that. No, I've never watched Gravity Falls watch it, but I've heard about it, mainly through Tumblr. Yep, 
yeah, again, Dark Brotherhood's another very another very good example of that Halloween addict. Exactly. That would be a problem. Lucian has to have a, a strong character. Yeah, that's got to be part. He has to have opinions. That's part of the character I've written. And I have to be true to the character I've written so far. People say, oh, just add the Stormcloak interactions. Let him follow Stormcloak players too. Let, let's just do that. And I'm like, but that wouldn't be true to the character I've written. And it's far more important that I hold true to the character that you guys have grown to enjoy. Uh, you know, I'd much rather he remained true to what I wrote than um, having him break that suspension of disbelief just to be able to comment on another quest line. Hey Marvin, welcome to the stream. So what I'm working on right now is a Saints and Seducers plugin for Lucian, which we've just finished, literally as of a few seconds ago. I'm just exporting the final line, just exporting the final lip line. There you go, now it's done. So now I need to do some polishing and testing and things, and then I should be able to release that over the next few weeks. So that's what I'm doing right now. So I'm pressing OK, and I'm going to hit save. Right. All the lines have dialogue. Let's see how many we did. 206 items. OK, so that means, assuming that I have correctly done a lip file for every WAV file, and let's be honest, I probably have messed one or two of them up, but um, 206, that's 103. We have 103 lines um, for this. Marvin, you're going to have to give me a bit more detail there. What do you mean to see all of his character? What does that mean? What do you mean by see his character? The thing is, Halloween addict, Lucian's mother is in the Imperial Army. Lucian is an Imperial. And the character that I've written would never support the Stormcloak, so I don't see how he could still be the player's friend and support them. If they're going and killing Imperials. It just doesn't... It just doesn't gel to me. I mean, I know the character because I wrote them. And the character I have in my head would not still be your friend if you went and joined the Stormcloaks. He wouldn't want anything to do with you. Um... No, there's no documentation about that, Marvin. I haven't written about... Well, at the moment, he doesn't have commentary on the Stormcloaks. He doesn't have commentary on the Dark Brotherhood. Uh, he doesn't have commentary. There is, There are no conditions in the game at the moment, in the current version of Lucian, uh, where he won't follow you. Uh, the, there's only one thing you can do that will make him leave you, but I don't, wouldn't want to spoil that necessarily, but there's one decision. Um, but I hope that I've written it sufficiently well that you should get a good impression of what his character is like from the trailer and from playing with the mod for a short period of time, which is that he's basically a nice person. He's an Imperial and he's nice. So he won't be keen on things that are not nice, like murdering people for money uh, or drinking people's blood or selling your soul to demons. So, yeah. So that's the, basically the gist of him, is nice science boy. But as I say, there is, if you go on my website onto josephrussellauthor.com or you just Google Joseph Russell uh, or, uh, or Google Joseph Russell Lucian or whatever, you'll find documentation there of a list of all the quests Lucian has commentary for. So if you click on that, you can see what he has comments on. This is the thing, Marvin. I don't know. I have, As I say, I haven't implemented any kind of interaction at all for the Dark Brotherhood or for the Civil War. Or for Dawn Guard. None of it's in the mod. And I don't yet know how I'll go about doing it. This is one of the issues is what how do I handle it if you leave him behind and then go and do the quest line and then rejoin him? How do I handle it if you leave him behind, go and do the first quest and then rejoin him? Because he shouldn't remember the first quest, but he needs to realise, you know, if you're in the Stormcloaks, you might be wearing Stormcloak armor. You might be 
You might take. It needs to be such that if you take him on any part of any quest to do with the Stormcloaks, he will realise you're a Stormcloak. But if you leave him for a bit of it and then rejoin him, have him rejoin you, how much does he know? Does he just assume that if he hasn't seen it, it hasn't happened? Might he have heard about it? I mean, if you're the one who killed General Tullius, that's surely got to become news in Skyrim that the Dragonborn killed General Tullius. And then why wouldn't Lucian hear about it? So it's a very complicated thing to handle, and I'm not quite sure all the facets of how I'm going to handle it yet. Yes, 1.6.2 is the current version. Tristam. Nick says, what would Lucian think of the Thieves' Guild? They're in a grey area. Yeah, but so because they're in a grey area, I think we could um, we can get away with it. Because they're in a grey area, I think it's possible to have Lucian, um, uh, you know follow you for it i think i think thieves guild is one we could justify okay right so that's all done so now what i want to do is i want to open up sse edit and have a look at this patch and see if i can spot anything obviously wrong with it hey mr video freak welcome to the stream well it's a gray area butane and that it is bad and not lawful so lucian wouldn't be up for it but it's also not as bad as murdering people stealing things is not as bad so i feel like it's something that you'd be more able to justify with lucian Whereas Dark Brotherhood, there's no way you can convince him that becoming an assassin is a good thing to do. So I'm just opening up the Saints and Seducers plugin and I'm going to close the creation kit. I have no idea, Lich Demons. As I say, I haven't started work on any kind of Thieves Guild interactions and I don't know what all the facets of it will be. If you edit a condition on a line inside a different ESP from your main ESP, will it cause problems? No, Mr. Video Freak, provided the second ESP is loaded below the first ESP in your load order, and you don't edit that same line with that same conditions in a third ESP. So if you have one ESP editing conditions in the first ESP, then that's fine. But if you edit those conditions, obviously, with two different ESPs, then those two different ESPs will conflict. So you can't, you need to be careful of that. But if it's just one line and then one mod, one other ESP affecting it, then sure, you can do that. That's fine. This is the problem, Watcher. It's very difficult. I don't know how I would go about detecting whether or not the player is a Robin Hood character. Right. Let's do the modding. If the sound's not playing, uh, make sure that you've put the WAV in the right folder, Mr. Video Freak. Make sure you've put it in the appropriate ESP folder. So all these lines are in Lucian Saints and Seducers patch.esp. But you need to put your line, that WAV needs to be under whatever ESP the original line is in. So if you're editing the condition in another ESP like this, if you put the line in there, it's in the wrong place. Um, so you need to make sure it's in the right place. Other than that, no, I have no idea then in that case, Mr. Video Freak. Not a clue. Sorry. That's my only idea for it. So good luck. You'll have to figure it out. Nope, Vickle. Nothing like that's been added in the new update. There is only one instance where Lucian will leave you. And that is that has been in the mod since the very beginning. Glad your summon spell works, Mr. Video Freak. 
Right, so I'm going to just open this up and have a look. And I'm just, at the moment, I'm going to start by looking for wild edits. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up all the edits here and just make sure there isn't anything here that's editing anything in the main quest that I didn't, you know, in the main file that I didn't mean to. Or just checking that there isn't anything that's just wrong. Anything that doesn't look bizarre. And that all looks fine to me. What I'm really watching out for is any any accidental edits. Anything that shows up in colour here. Anything that shows up yellow or uh, or red or anything is going to be a conflict or an edited record. And there shouldn't be any of those in here. And there aren't. So that's fine. It's all new content. That's good. That's what I wanted it to be. So that's all behaving correctly. So that's great news. It's looking fine then. It's version 1.6.2. That's correct. Author Joseph Russell. So that's fine. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to purge the unnecessary master dependencies. Now, you don't really need to do this here because all of these master files here are requirements for Lucian anyway, or they're Lucian. You know, they're, they're, all, they're all stuff the player should have installed anyway. But I like to just, it makes me happy to clean the master dependency, the unnecessary master dependency. So we're only depending on files you absolutely strictly need. So I'm just going to do that now. So I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to click clean masters to remove the unused masters. And there you go. The only ones left are Skyrim, update.esm, the creation club, uh, Saints and Seducers file, and Lucian.esp. And that just makes me happy. That just makes it a bit tidier. And that works. And I'm going to press save. And then I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to do check for errors because sometimes that returns some problems. So it's good to check whether this is, um, uh, whether this is going to return anything bad. Nope, we've got no errors. So this looks good to go. So I'm happy with the ESP now. So the next job, now that we've saved that, I'm going to close the sound editing software and just save that. And I'm going to open Audacity because now I need to balance the audio for these lines. Um, but actually what I need to do before I do that is back up the lines. So I have a folder within my... So before you should always do this, before you ever start messing around with your audio lines, you should always back them up in case you ruin them. Because the last thing you want to do is have to record them all again. So I have a folder called Sounds Archive within my Lucian folder. And here I have backups of the raw original recordings for every line with the correct ID name. But it's all there. So then I'm going to open. Now I'm just going to. Uh, I'm just going to go to voice. And I'm going to drag the entire Lucian Saints and Seducers patch ESP over into there and copy it. So now that'll be there. And then that means if I mess anything up now in my audio balancing process. Then um, I'll be able to revert to the originals without having to do repeat loads of work again. Have I done a video on making patches? I haven't, but this will be an important part of my How to Make a Follower mod tutorial series. It'll be one of the later episodes because it's towards the end of the modding process, but I will explain how you do all this sort of thing in that series. However, these tutorial, these uh, modding workshops are also great opportunities to ask me about this sort of thing if you've got questions. Shout out from Ninja to me. Thank you, Ninja, for making Thinky Thursdays have such a wonderfully productive vibe so that you can watch while you knit. You've nearly finished your scarf. Very exciting. Good for you, Ninja. What kind of scarf is it? Has it got a pretty pattern on it? Has, is it a self-portrait scarf? Has it got a picture of you on it? That'd be very impressive. Uh, so there we go. We've done that. Copied all of that across. So now I've backed it up. It's time to open up Audacity and rebalance the audio. That's correct, Halloween Addict. We are reaching the end of the Saints and Seducers journey. So I want file, import, audio. And we're going to go back and we're going to find our Lucian Saints and Seducers patch.esp. Here we are. And we're going to import all of these lines and there should be 103 if we've done this right which takes a little while to run through. Rainbow! That's pretty, Ninja. Like Doctor Who. Oh, and longer than you. Very Doctor Who. I love it. Tom Baker would approve. Does Lucian have a favourite food? Yes, yeah, sweet rolls. <laughs> 
Um, so if you have a listen to um, Lucian's interactions with Ori, which are on YouTube, if you look up Lucian and Ori, she has this conversation with Lucian and she asks him about his favourite dish. And uh, he answers. So do check that video out if you're interested. Because they have a conversation about it. And it's probably better, more fun to listen to that than have me just tell you. So now, oh, I forgot to actually do anything. I just imported them all, but didn't. So I'm going to go effect on all of them. Yeah, I process them all at the end. Uh, yeah, normally, yeah. By batch. So I highlight them all. My processing, as you're about to see, Panther Brain, is much, much more basic than Gary's process with Inigo lines. Gary actually bothers doing all sorts of tweaking and everything. I just whack them all in Audacity, open them up and normalize them. So effect, normalize. And the compression's already done in my recording software. As I record, it automatically compresses it. So it's already compressed, so now it's just a matter of normalizing. With I, I, I usually normalize to minus 3 dB. Which is a little bit louder than some mods go for. Um, but I think when I listen to it in-game, it sounds about right. The occasional person... Well, I've had only really one person very recently outright just complain that Lucian is too loud. Can't do anything about it now. It's far too late to change that. But, um... I don't think he's too loud. I think he sounds about right. I think it's better to have him slightly louder so you're better, easier to hear him because it can be quite hard to hear the lines sometimes. But I've tried to balance the audio and I, th I think minus 3 dB works for me. So we'll go with that. Right, we've now normalized all these lines. You can see they're all a bit louder and they're all normalized to minus 3 dB. So we're now good to go by going file, export multiple. I, of course, show this whole process in my tutorial series. So you probably know this already. But, um, and then we're going to look for the folder to export it to, which is not this default one, because this is going to put it in Lucian.esp, and we don't want that. We want Lucian Saints and Seducers, patch ESP, JR Lucian Voice. Okay, export. And hopefully it's not going to crash. Nope, there we go. We successfully exported all 103 lines. See you, Yotam Randor. We don't want to save any changes, because we don't want to save that file. But now if we open up Lucian Saints and Seducers patch.esp and have a look and sort by date modified. You should see all the lines now all say 745, which is the time right now. So these have all now been updated. So that's done, which is fantastic news. So the next thing now is to open up the Yakatori audio converter, uh, which is not that one. That's Lazy Voice Finder. It's this one. And we need to convert them into Foozes. Change them from .lip files into .foos file. .wav and .lip into .foos. So I'm going to go file, open. And we're going to go to Lucian Saints and Seducers patch. Hydrate. Ooh, cold tea, lovely, but thank you, I will. I'm going to highlight all these files. Control and A, open. And that's going to import them all into Yakitori Audio Converter. Then we're going to go convert from WAV to foos, and I'm saying lip required, so it should return an error if any of them are missing a lip file. But I don't think any of them are. And now we have all these dot foos files along with the dot lips and the dot WAV. So now I'm going to show type, sort by type, so we get all the foos files together. And then I'm going to take all the lips and the wavs and I'm going to delete them. And this means I can test the foozers in game. Uh, point to notice, I'll highlight this in my tutorial series, but just to remind you guys. In terms of efficiency, this is why you should always use .foos file format. Is if we show the size, and I'll sort by name just so you can compare them. So here are the three files corresponding to one line. The lip file, 520 kilobytes. The lip, sorry, sorry, the WAV file. The WAV file, 520 kilobytes. The lip file, 9 kilobytes. The foos file, which is both the lip file and the WAV file combined together, only 50 kilobytes. So it's a much, much more efficient file format. So it's ten over 10 times smaller. So if you are releasing a mod... You should convert them to foos files because it makes the download so much smaller and your audience will thank you for it. Well, they won't thank you for it, but they will be glad of it. Particularly those who are on Xbox because they have limitations on the file size. So you need to do everything you can to make the files as small as possible for those people. Because uh, they only have a finite amount of memory to save mods into. So therefore, converting to foos is an essential part of the process. 
Thank you, Collins Raff. So there you go. It's a fairly basic thing, but some people don't necessarily do it or don't know about it. Um, so I thought it's important to highlight, particularly if you're new to modding. Foos is the way to go. And as I say, Yakitori Audio Converter is the best tool I have found for converting from WAV to Foos. So do download that if you're doing any modding with voice acting. Okay, so now I'm going to highlight all the lips and on the WAVs and I'm going to delete them. Which is always very scary when you hit that delete button. You say, are you sure you want to move these 206 items to the recycle bin? Yes, because I've backed them up. You can back, you can convert back from a foos to a dot .wav if you want. If you need to. Um, but I like to keep backups instead. Makes me happier to know that I've got original backups of the original things. If anything goes wrong in the conversion process or anything like that, I've got the original backups. But uh, I've got those backups, so they're all there. So I'm happy to delete these ones. So it's just sorting those out. Maybe a secondary set of Yol, Tor, and Shul files. Oh, and Rowan Dar files from Bard. It's Foos, not Foos. Foos. Different. Don't ask me what it stands for, I don't know. Final undulating zigzag. Right, there we go. So that's sorted. So, the next thing in the process now is testing it. We've only got 10 minutes left on the stream. So we weren't have very long, but we can at least test that it loads up in game. Shout out from Karen Med Q to me for the foos. Thank you, Karen Med. Uh, so I'm going to minimize that, minimize that. We're done with SSE edit now. So I'm going to pop us back on camera while I set the game up. Oh, Vortex I need open now to make sure the file is activated. Vortex is my mod manager of choice. I thoroughly recommend it. It's always served me incredibly well and I've been very impressed with it. Um, I know some people prefer Mod Organizer, and that's fine. I'm not going to get into a battle of which is the better Mod Manager or anything, but I am a big Vortex fan. So I'm just waiting for this to load up, and then I'll show you guys what I'm doing again. I also... While I found the process of transferring all my files from Nexus Mod Manager to Vortex, I found that quite a scary, intimidating process. There was quite a lot to it, and I had to be quite careful. But it didn't go wrong at all. It worked perfectly. So, I was surprised at that. I was really convinced something would have gone wrong. But it finished, and it worked. I had a scary moment where I thought it hadn't. But actually, it just worked, which was a lovely thing. So here's me singing the praises of Vortex. It's actually struggling to even load up just at the moment, but bear with it. It just worked like Todd prophesied. Exactly. Exactly, Bard. Very surprising. Okay, here we go. It's actually loaded now. Having Cubase in the background probably isn't going to help anything else. What's my favourite joke? My favourite joke I actually put in the mod is the first joke that I have... Well, it's my favourite because it's the first joke I've ever heard. It's not the funniest joke that I've ever heard, by any means, because it's not particularly funny. But it was one of my first coherent sentences I ever said, which is, um, Why did the crab go to jail? Because he kept pinching things. Hee 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 hee. So little little three or four year old or two year old or whatever, very, very young Joseph knew this, didn't really understand what the joke meant or what a joke even was. But um But that was one of my first sentences. And I have put that in the mod. He will make that joke about the dwarven armored, armored mud crab now. So that makes me happy to know that that's in there. A little bit of that legacy has gone into the mod. Okay, I'm going to switch back to uh, screen with uh, camera so you can see what's going on. So here's Vortex open and I've filtered by Lucian. Here's our... Oh, can you actually see my screen? Yes, you can. Good. Here's our Lucian Saints and Seducers patch just here. And I'm going to click Enable. Because, remember, it'll always be disabled by default. So if you've ever just finished a new mod and you want to test it and you're like, oh my god, why isn't this showing up in game? 
check you've enabled it because I've fallen foul of that a lot before. So watch out. You know, make sure you remember to enable your mod. Um, right, we've got five minutes left, so that's just long enough to boot the game up. And just make sure that it is at least um, enabled properly. Lucian Let's Play patch. Yeah, so what that Let's Play patch is, it is a uh, patch I made for conflict resolution. So it's one of my personal patches that will only work for my specific Lucian setup. And I made it when I started the let, let, Let's Play and it just whips through and fixes a few conflicts that I found between my mods um, in um, SSE Edit. But there's meaningless for me to ever release that unless you have exactly the same build that I do. Thank you so much for the donation, Vickle. That's really kind of you. Thank you. You're wonderful and epic too. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. So I'm just going to test this now in the last five minutes, but uh, while we're waiting for the game to load up, on Saturday, this Saturday, we're not actually going to be doing our usual Skyrim stream because this Saturday we're doing um, I Want to Carry On with Marvel's Avengers. There's been two new DLCs out since we last finished it, and I really want to play them, and it seems a shame to not stream them considering um, you know we streamed all the previous parts, so I'd like to have them on the YouTube channel for completeness. So on Saturday, we will be playing uh, Marvel's Avengers, Taking Aim, and then Future Imperfect, the new uh, Kate Bishop and Hawkeye DLCs. So do tune in for that if you're interested, because uh, it's a really lovely story. We, we loved when we played through the main game, the main campaign. Everyone really seemed to enjoy that when we played that before. I certainly thought it was a really cool story. Um, it was one of my favorite uh, in-game stories in ages. You know, um, it was awesome. So I'm really keen to see how the story continues and what the next chapter is and everything. So we'll be picking that up on Saturday. It'll be Superhero Saturday returning again. That won't be a permanent thing. Probably just be for a few weeks while we play through the DLCs. And then we'll be back to uh, continuing the adventures of Dave. So never fear. It's just because I have limited time to stream at the moment. So I have to stream one thing kind of or the other. Right, so Skyrim's loaded now, so I'm going to go to Game with Camera and try and get that hooked up to the game. Which still thinks it's looking for Fall Guys, but that's from Monday. Dave gets a day off, exactly, yes. So here we go. Now what shall I load up? Let's load Dave up. Can a dragon really blow fire from both ends, says Inigo the Brave. Who knows? Maybe it can, maybe it can't. Thanks for the bits, Karen. Thank you for tuning in. It's been lovely to have you here. Right, here we are in game. Sorry, I keep oh, meaning yes, to course. give you this since this arrangement seems to be working out all right for us so far. Oh, yeah, yeah, where, yeah, that way. okay. Handy, right? Yeah, very handy. Don't me- I yeah. mean, hopefully we won't have to use it. He is it cold, Stitchy, yes. I'll stick to you like a- like a- oh, I don't know, something sticky. Yep, well, that's what I'll do. Right, so I'm going to first check to see that this is basically loaded up by doing help J.R. Lucian CC. Yep, there's a quest, J.R. Lucian, CC, Saints and Seducers, and it's got the uh, code FE08. So that is working, which is great to hear. The file has actually loaded up. And we have, we're seeing here various things related to Saints and Seducers. So that is very good. Yes, boss? Cool. Let's get moving. Oh, he's cold. Oh, no. So if I give myself the Sword of Jigalag, maybe. I don't know whether this is going to work or not. I need to check my conditions. But Jigalag? Nope. How, how do we spell it? Jigalag? No, that's the same spelling again. Help. Jig... Double G? Jigalag. There we go. So I want not Jigalag sword. I want sword of Jigalag. So player.add item 09000083B1. Yes, 
spot. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to spam him and it? see if I can get him to say the line, which he probably won't. Mean? Oh, and I'll probably need to do a quick save and reload before that'll work. So quick save and quick load. Because things, mod, modded dialogue often doesn't work on the first time that you try it. Um, so just to eliminate that. I wonder what Jigalag makes of you swinging his sword around. Doesn't he need it? Probably not, to be fair. He has enough spikes as is. One more try. <laughs> I wonder what Jigalag makes of you swinging his sword around. <laughs> Probably not, to be fair. He has you see what I've done? Is. I exported the two takes together. <laughs> oh, that's really funny. <laughs> it's good luck that I just happened to spot that. I wonder if I've done that for any other lines. <laughs> right, I'll have to fix that. Look, we're out of time for today's stream, so that's the first order of my testing process now to go back in and re-export that. Next week, we'll probably be working on something new. Um, we probably won't be doing more Saints and Seducer stuff. I think next Thursday, we'll be doing um, Rare Curios, probably, or something else. We'll see what else gets suggested in the meantime, but bye for now. Yeah, anyway, it's good to know at least that the file does work. It has loaded up, and I'll have to fix that line. Anyway... Thank you all so much for coming with me on this journey of modding discovery. It's been lovely having you all along. Been lovely chatting to you all, catching up with you as ever. You are lovely people and it's lovely to have you around. How many more times do you want me to say lovely? Lovely, lovely, lovely. Um, uh, yeah, so I'll be back for Superhero Saturday, uh, Multiplayer Monday and Thinky Thursday at 5pm UK time. Um, do bear in mind on Sunday, clocks change in the UK, but it'll still be 5pm UK time. So just, just look that up. Check what time that is in your time zone and that's when I'll be streaming. So yeah. See you next time. Stay marvellous. Look after yourselves. Wear a mask. Wash your hands. All that sort of thing. Bye-bye. <laughs>